Hello and welcome. So today we're going to be covering in this little bit of history, the salad helmet, or what I will try to convince you, the best medieval helmet that was made for the late age of the medieval times. So if we take a look at the development of what is going to be the salad helmet, this is a chart you can find. It's very, it's maybe not to be the most accurate thing, but it gives you a general idea. So we start with the Spangle Helm around 600 AD, and it evolves into the Coronal or Norman helmet, right? This is the helmet that we're all mostly familiar with. It's basically a skull cap, more or less. And then this developed into the famous helmets of the Crusader period, which we all know from the Crusader period, or the First Crusade and the Second Crusade, which developed into the flat top and then the sugar loaf eventually. And then in the 1300s, it develops into the bassinet line. If you continue with this line, you you get to the salad around, around the 1380s, and then you can start to go up and then note it again. It'll... Uh, deviate here basically going into the kettle hat on the right and then if you keep going forward you will see that it develops into the salad now the salad is mostly originated as best sources we can tell it originated in italy however it's also made its way around the medieval world and mostly in germany is where the main deviation started to come out with if we take a look here this is a picture knight aaron drew um Again, he'll be linked in the video below. But this is a general idea of the salad in the 15th century, okay? These are the, all the types of variations. Well, not all of them, but most of them, right? So if we start on the left, we can see that the open-faced one. Now, again, offers pretty good protection for your head. You don't have a visor, so your face is pretty exposed. But it is a very decent helmet at what it's supposed to do. If you look at the Italian visor versus the German-style uh, half visor, you can see that the brow plate on the Italian one, basically what we're talking about here is this front plate. It's giving you extra protection on your brow. Now, this helmet gives you excellent protection to your front and and uh, your backside of your head. You're pretty much encased in this helmet. German salad is, the, you can see that the tail has been extended down. This offers more protection to the back of your neck, whereas the Italian ones are a little bit shorter. Um, so it depends on which style you want and which you would think better. Now. This number no visor, what this is referring to is a munitions grade helmet. Now, munitions grade, what that is talking about is basically a poor man's helmet. Um, its visor doesn't articulate, and you have to raise the entire helmet up and down. But it is very cheap, and you can be used to equip a lot of soldiers very quickly. Or if you're a duke, you can provide this in your armory for any retainers that you have. Let's, one route down here is the articulated tail. Best we can tell is it originated in Germany. But basically, it takes the long uh, protection of the German salad, except that it is no longer, um, the tail will no longer hit the very back plate, because that could be a problem if you needed to look up. The articulated solves this as you can get more visibility. Uh, you can start to lower your neck or increase your neck without um, this back tail hitting the back plate. Basically, you get more upwards visibility with this helmet. Now, with all of these helmets, you can see that they come with a lining. If they didn't have a lining in them, you wouldn't do anything besides be a big piece of metal on your head. But this lining protects you from blows. Now, we can see that they're a simple bever and an articulated bever. Basically, the difference between these two, and they have the same purpose more or less. The simple bever is basically a it's stuck in one place and it uh, provides cover for your lower face. The articulated bever does the same thing. However, this top little bit can be raised lowered lower down. What this allows you to do is be able to breathe in a helmet. And then this is the final development of the salad. It's a closed salad. Now, it has more advantages in the fact that it is more protective. However, it is also more restrictive in your breathing. So, in my opinion, the best salad, as I will show you yeah, with some testimony from some reenactors, is articulated bever with a style of visor. You can have Italian, German, or the articulated German. Again, what this allows you to do is pull the visor up if you need to see more. And if you need to have, if you're heavily breathing or you're not directly in combat, you can lower the articulated bever, this one right here, down. So you have very excellent being able to breathe out of your helmet, which is a very good thing. And you can also see out of your helmet. These are very good things. And they do not take very long to raise the bever and, and lower the visor to get yourself full protection. Now, we're going to go take some um, testimony from some reenactors from Lindy Beige's newest video. And we will see what I'm talking about there. Okay, so here we're going to take some testimony from this reenactor, right? Um, if you can learn through history, it's a very good source. 
However, most of the time, there are little gaps that we just don't know of what happened. Now, this basically what this reactor is going to say is, hey, I can actually see out of this helmet and I can breathe out of this helmet. Now, as we can see, his bever is down and he also has his visor up. Now, he can raise his bever to get even more protection and lower the visor down. This will increase his protection. But as you can see, he's very comfortable right now. And on the right, you also see that this other reenactor also has a very good being able to ability to breathe and see what is in front of him. This gives a salad a good general approach, but we're going to see what he says. Yeah, you've gone for the, the salad and bevel combination. And uh, what do you think are the advantages of this over, uh, say, the closed helmet? Salad bevel is eminently wearable. That they are a functional helmet that you can wear all day. You can take the helmet off, keep the bever on. You can take the bever off, keep the helmet on. The bever closes or drops. You can eat, drink, hear, do things other than fight in it. It's not as protective as a closed helm. There are gaps and weak points in it, but I would rather have a helmet that I'm going to be wearing at the time than a really good helmet that I've left at home in the locker room. I like salaries and bevers, they work. They're comfortable. So, as we can see from his testimony, basically, it, you can have, um, if we go back and take a look, we also, at this time period, there are different helmets. There is the bassinet, right? that completely covers your head. There is the eventual development of the Bergenets, but basically all these closed helms down here, these armets. Now, they offer, um, as, what does he said? Fantastic face protection. However, they are, in the slightest terms, a pain in the ass to be able to breathe out of and do everything that you need to, to um, do everything that's not directly fighting combat. Now, this is why the Salit, in my opinion, is the best medieval helmet. It gives you a well-rounded suit of protection that you can upgrade your defenses and lower them at the same time without sacrificing too much visibility and the ability to breathe. It's very good for your everyday soldier. Again, people aren't going to be walking around a wall in this closed helm. Now, they can very well easily do that in a salad with this configuration. Maybe not the bever all the time, but just a helmet you can put on to go around the walls in a siege situation is very good. If we take a look at these, you can see that again, it offers very good protection, um, especially if you're just wearing it around. And again, if you're just walking around, it's better to have a helmet on than not have a helmet on. So with that, I'm going to show you guys some modern examples of why this thing is still in use. Okay, so we all know that Wikipedia is a fantastic website, but it can be edited and it may not be the most um, a historical source that you could cite from. But we're just going to read basically some things out of here. But we all know that the Stahlhelm, this helmet right here, that the Germans used during World War I and came up with is a very good helmet. Now, we can see in the history, the design of the Stahlhelm was carried out by Dr. Friedrich Schur, the Technical Institute at Hover, Hanover in early 1915. Schur carried out a study of head wounds, suffered from the trenches, and submitted a recommendation for a steel helmet. Shortly afterwards, he was ordered to Berlin. Schur undertook the task of designing and producing a suitable helmet based broadly on the 15th century salad helmet, which offered good protection for the head and neck. Now, as we can see that this is the original design, you can see that it is very big. However, it still does its job of protecting the wearer's neck and head very well. Now, if we look at some more modern examples, I will show you that we still use this stall helm, and this stall helm is a derivative of the salad, which was used back in medieval times. Now, as you can see, this is the army combat helmet that they're trying to get everybody up to. This is the ECH, the enhanced combat helmet. You can see that its silhouette design is very similar. If you look at this, you look at the stall helm, and then if you go back to the salad, if we continue all of it, you can see that there is a clear trend of going from a design that this design of the German salad all the way to the stall helm, all the way to modern day origins of helmets that we still wear. I will show you one more example of the creme de la crop that you could possibly get for helmets today. This would be the equivalent of wearing a King's or a Duke's salad. Okay, so we all know ops cores are all of the schnazzy stuff that all the special forces guys wear, right? We can see again that the helmet design really hasn't changed much. If we go back to the salad, you see it's a very effective design here, right? Protects most of your head, keeps it relatively the same shape. 
Stahlhelm does the same thing. Direct continuation, more or less, of um, the Stahlhelm. And then we look at our enhanced combat helmet. It is a more or less direct direct uh, successor to the Stahlhelm. There's more detail into this that I could get into later. But basically, it is they took the same measurements that the Stahlhelm is without saying they did, like without using the actual helmet. But took the same design of principles and applied it to a modern-day helmet. Again, offers very good protection. And now we come to the op scores, right? Obviously, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I don't have $2,000. But again... The helmet does a very good job, and it protects you much like a salad would. It has more ear cutouts because of the way we use helmets today with um, headphones and stuff, right? They didn't have that with the salad. So there you go. All the way to your modern example of why the salad is a very good helmet and why, in my opinion, it is a very the best medieval helmet of all time. So if you like this video, there's another video you can click and learn more history. Otherwise, see you people later.